Father, that we are your children. We are no longer slaves. We do not fear because we are your children. We thank you. Thank you for the promise. Thank you for fulfilling it. Thank you for upholding it. Thank you that we are your children. We thank you, our God. Abba Father, thank you. Today, Lord, continue to remind us, continue to encourage us, continue to open our understanding, to go deep in knowing who we are. Help us, Lord. Speak to us, King of Glory. Shed off all the noises that cover that truth from us. Today, we are waiting upon you that you will speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, and make us that. Let us be what you purposed us to be, to walk with you, hold our hands, to be the real children that are pleasing before you, with your identity, to move on this earth as your children, to take victory, to reconcile everything to you as your own children, as the heirs and the co-heirs of the kingdom. Help us, Lord, today. We thank you. We bless you. We give ourselves to you to minister to us. And you receive the glory and honor in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, choir. Thank you so much. Praise God. We thank God for that truth. We thank God for that truth that we are children of God. What manner of love that we are called his children. We are going to go straight to the word, which is the real truth of what we are talking about. I feel that today God is trying to make us able to remember that every day of our lives, every second, that we are not slaves, but we are children. And what does it mean to be children? And the children of who you can imagine? Children of God. Last week we talked about who he is. But right now he wants to, us to know our identity. Let's go to John, um, John 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were... Yes, that's where it ends. You can add on 13. Okay. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Praise God. You can be looking for First John 3. You can hear the word is so clear that those as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. So those who understand the word right, I think it is the fullness of being a child. So he gave us the right to be children of God, meaning there's no one who can take it away as long as we believed in him. And I know how many people here have believed in God? Some people are not putting up their hands. I don't know where you belong. But at least those who have put up their hands, as long as you know that you believe in God, you believe in Christ, you are given the right to be a child of God. Praise God. We need to clap for that. So meaning, if there is anyone who is a child by blood, we are also children. We have the right, full rights. I don't see any scripture which says that you've given like some rights and others are not given to you. No. All those who believed in him, they were given the right to become children of God. And to those who believe in his name, who were not born not of the blood, remember that? He's even trying to labor to explain. Not by blood, but by faith. We shall see those details. So, and not even by the will of man, but by the will of God. Praise God. First John 3. Let's read First John 3. Yes. First John uh, chapter 3. You start from verse 1. It reads, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Behold, now we are children of God 
and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Three, I continue? three, just for three. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Amen, amen. Now, this scripture shows us that we may not have completely re uh, known or, or revealed, we are not yet revealed the fullness of what we are supposed to be. But it says, first of all, it says, behold, what manner of love. That's a sign of love. I don't think we qualified for this. Anyone who qualified to be a child of God? At least I did not qualify. But it's just by his love, the manner of love by our Father to bestow on us such love to make us his own children. Moreover, not qualifying to be children. But he says we are children as long as we believe in him. Only belief makes us children. He made it so easy for us. Whether we understand it or not, as long as you believe in him, you're a child of God. And that should make us feel strong. I'm not saying you be proud, but to know who you are, know your identity, and you will, know, you will see how you walk on top of many things that many times make us go down or suppress us. So we are children of God. We are not even sons and, and daughters of the the, 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 the king of this earth. No, the children of God, who is the creator of heaven and earth. And then verse 2 continues to say, Beloved, now we are the children, we are children of God. And it has not been revealed what we shall be. That should make us be expectant. Uh, according to this word, when you read it, you see that maybe there's something supernatural that will happen to us, which is a fact. And then he says that we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Meaning, if he was able to go, with, you remember when at the, after resurrection, he was talking to his disciples and all of a sudden they saw him getting into the clouds and he disappeared. Meaning, we have the potential of such kind of things. Are we together? If the devil, I've listened to some of the agents of the devil, they tell us how they move in, in air. Can you not even, just they fly. They just, they are here, their bodies and their spirits go and disappear. They go somewhere else. If the devil has such authority, what about our God? And I know it's because the enemy has been stealing us from knowing the truth. I'm not saying that we are going to just fly anyhow. No, but when it's necessary, maybe we may need to do that. Elijah was able to do it. You remember when it started raining? He had to, the, the, whole, the, the Spirit of God got him and he had to move faster than the king. So, we have such authority. As long as we are children of God, that means we will be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. There is that condition that we do not forget, just as he's pure. If we want to enjoy the fullness of being the children of God, we must be pure. Praise God. Amen. We have to be pure because he is pure. That means he is our DNA. If he's pure, we must be pure. We have to be like him. You know the relationship between a father and a, and a child or parents and children? This child, when you check the child, that child must have the DNA of the parents, more especially the father. So, if we are to move with him as children, we cannot forget to be pure, because he's pure. If we are not pure, I believe that we get out of that right, full right, because we have brought in something which is not of his identity. So, God, by his love, John, John 1 is telling us that what manner of love. In his love, he made us his children. And as you know, once we are children, that means there is that relationship which is so clear. As you relate with your parents, so we must relate with him at that level. Praise God. You know, many times I, I had a friend who was so committed to God, but she grew up knowing 
You have to fear God like you must do right. Everything has to be so perfect so that he, she can please God. So one time when we started relating, we we're working together, we did a training together, we we're fellowshipping together. So somehow she started wondering about me. I didn't know. She just confessed later. As we we're about to, to separate from the training, she just told me, she said, you know, Judy, I want to thank God for you. I said, what? The time I started relating with you, you have helped me to know that I can relate with God as my father. See, to me, it was a shock. Then how, why, why were you relating to him? She said to me, I had to do all sorts of things to be upright with him. So I was working by law. Hmm? But now, after relating with you, I discovered that he can be my friend and my father and he's on my terms, You're like so close, like I can be free. I said, really? You know, to me, I was like, oh my God, how can you miss that? Because personally, I don't know how to be so much in that, um, the laws and procedures, you have to do this, you have to stand, you have to do what, those things I can't manage. Naturally, I find I relate with him as my own, as, as, a, as a friend and a parent. So she told me that from today, I mean from relating with you, I started changing my approach to him. So I know that now he can accept me, he can correct me, he's so good, he's not so like too much of punishing me and all that. So I said, of course, he's your father. How, how do you see your father? The person, like the human, uh, your parents, how do they relate with you? So as they relate with you, that's almost the same way. Though for them they are not perfect, but the Father is so perfect. So to me, what I'm sharing is that God expects us to relate with him as a real loving father, loving mother, loving parent. Praise God. And you know, as how you have the freedom, some of you are parents, you know how a child behaves to a, child, to a father, first of all, or to a parent. They totally depend on the parents. Total reliance. They have to rely on you. Even when they know what to do at this low, uh, young age, like that little girl, even if she knows that she has to go to the bathroom, she will not go there. She will come to you, even if you are far away from where it is. She will run and come and tell you, I want to go to the bathroom. Just for you to say, yes, go. She will come, even if you are, she's dirty, she will come running to you. She doesn't care because you're a parent. She will, you know, the real, th that feeling of like what she is, is who, what you put in her or relying on you. I believe strongly that God wants us to relate with him in the same way. Same way. Such freedom, such love. And all that is coming from that point of love. If you love your parents and they love you, you don't remember to just package yourself very well or what. Of course, there is a level of discipline. You must have discipline. But there's that love. And even when they discipline you, you remain in love. Praise God. So God is expecting us to relate with him as a parent to us, as that loving parent. Our parents may not have been good to us. Some of them maybe were rough. Others were not even caring. We may have some issues, but let us know that our Father God is far away better than what we have experienced in our lives. Praise God. But still, even when our parents may not have done the best, we have that bond that cannot be broken. First of all, you have to identify with them. The name you have, the, the identity you have on this earth, it's all about them. Do we understand that? When they ask you that, what, what, what's your name? You mention your name and most of you who have like prominent fathers, you add the father's name. Why? So that you can be identified to be known. Number two, clans. You know we have clans. Which clan? You must identify with that. You have to be of that, that tribe. You know, we relate directly and it identifies us in our traditions as you know. So when we take it into the terms of the spiritual life and the walk with him, that means we must be of that same nature. If I had my sister, she used to say, she, she would not mention her tribe. She would say, me, I'm, I'm a daughter of Christ. 
she would mention her name and then say, Ka Yesu, Ka Katibe Ka Yesu. She used to call herself with her grandmother. She loved her grandmother so much. But later when she grew in, in, in Christ, she said, no, you know, like, I'm this Muharawa Yesu. You know, the daughter of Christ. We took it like a joke, but she meant it seriously. And I got to understand that she's confessing it and it is that. She would not mention the, the clan or the tribe and she would say, of Yesu. So, we need to know that every day of our lives, we must relate with him as our own. And your identity of who you are has to be related, uh, dependent of him. Praise God. And if we take it from that level, I believe we'll be able to manage. I'm trying to make it so simple that we know it is part and parcel of our daily living to be the children of God. We must relate with him as he is with us. You know, like, for example, when you are in your family, we are of one uh, family, all of us, and that should even help us not to have divisions because once we know that we all belong to one father, that makes us brothers and sisters. We are one, one family. If my, my, my brother is not doing what I want, I do not hate the person. No, we can even disagree on something, but we remain of one father and one home, one family. Meaning that there are points or times when I have to protect this person, even when I don't agree with him. If another person comes from outside and starts talking negative, I'll come in because I'm protecting my home and my family. Am I talking the language you understand? Those are things that happen every day in our usual lives. And this should be helping us also in our walk with Christ. If my brethren or my person, my sister, does something that is not of good uh, record or something which is embarrassing, I should not stand against or talk about it or have boldness. I will quickly try to see how to help that outsiders don't see. Are we together? And that makes me, uh, if we can all be that, that means we know who we are. And that, that will make us to be one. You have one family, you have the openness. First of all, you as a family, there's that freedom of having the freedom of love and openness and freedom of knowing that if I'm right, I should be strong and proud of that. Praise God. And that unconditional love that will not allow us to be different or separate. No, we have different nature, different qualities, different strength, but we are one body. Praise God. Praise him so much. And there is that inner peace that will not allow us to be shaken by anything. As long as we know that he is my father, there's that inner peace in me cannot allow me to be scared. Praise God. But all this will take a position of total surrender. The word told us that he is pure. We must be pure. How do we benefit from being a child of God? There's a level of total surrender. Getting out of our human or carnal understanding and carnal control and allow him to take charge of our lives. The total surrender is very, very important because many times we give ourselves to him, but in some sections of our lives, we keep being independent. And obviously, that means we keep him out. He wants to be a real father and th someone who is in control of our lives. Praise God. And in that, we shall be able to enjoy his benefits. Let's read Galatians 3 from verse 26. So we need to remember that his our father, we are his children, he's for us, but we must be pure and we have to make that decision of total surrender. Galatians 3, 26. Galatians 3 from verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. 
There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the appointed time by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, there is a time when the word is clear and you don't know the words to add on. It is so powerful. It is showing how we are, totally, we are children of God to the point that we can say, Abba, Father. And indeed, he's our father. And at, at this time, he adds on to tell us how we are heirs of his kingdom. Praise God. And we are no longer slaves, but his children. And we have enjoyed this by adoption, by his love and his grace. He redeemed us. Praise God. We are no longer living by law, but by love. Praise God. So that means that even when you can, here it shows that even when we are his children, but we are living in the bondage of the elements of this world, until he came and he became, he redeemed us. Praise God. So that is again emphasizing how we are his children, meaning we have even the entitlement of inheritance. Hmm? You know what an heir does? At the right time, he says we are his heirs and we can stand and say, Abba, Father, and he listens to us. Praise God. Meaning that we have the gifts of all that belongs to him. If he says that I have given you authority of everything, it's not just by word. It is real. It's upon us to take it. All the authority belongs to him. You remember here we read where he says that the keys of heaven is given to you. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. So whatever you ask, I'll give it to you. So we have all. Because we are his children, he trusts us. He has given it to us. We are chosen. We are a royal priesthood. We are, you know, everything that is for him. Remember that he is a king. So he also mentions how we are royals also to him. The royal king, uh, kingly and priestly children. It all belongs to us. Praise God. So there is nothing that should take us away from him. There is nothing that should take us uh, uh, in a distance. We are the children of the house. The children in the kingdom, the children in the palace, we are the real children that are, are ready to take charge of everything. And he has given it to us. Praise God. So we need to take it up and know that indeed I'm a prince, I'm a princess, I'm a child, I'm a king. Remember even in, 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 in Psalms, he talks, David says, you are gods. Are we together? And that's a fact. When God speaks something, it's upon us to take it and move in it by faith. Praise God. There is no reason that we should be far away. We should behave like slaves. No, we are entitled. If he, our father is rich, I should be rich. If my father is full of all the good things, I should enjoy that. You imagine if your parent has all that. Don't you enjoy them? Why are we not enjoying our things? Because he's able. Praise God. Let's read Psalms uh, 82 verse 6. Psalm 82 verse 6. 82 verse 6, yes. Yes, it reads, I said, you are God's, and all of you are children of the Most High. Yes. 
even if you stop there, as simple as that. You can also read uh, uh, Psalm 139, verse 1. Here it shows that we are gods. I mentioned it and thank God that it's written. You can read it by yourself. And all of you are children of the Most High. What does it mean? I pray that we normally meditate on these words. By the time the word says you are God, what does it mean to be God? Because we have that DNA within us. We are gods. Whether we understand it or not, it's clear we are gods and we are the children of the Most High. Praise God. Psalm 139 from verse 1. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Amen. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Amen. Even if we pray, stop there. Praise God. Let's clap for the uh, Holy Spirit. Powerful, powerful word. Praise God. And this conf confirms that he knew us even before. This psalm is so clear. By the, I, I, only, I always request that when we go back, we get into these scriptures when we're in a quiet time and get deep into getting the real truth. Here we just introduce, but get time, please. It is a request that if we want to grow in walking with him intimately and knowing him, we need time. In all your busy time, let's have time to read the word. And such words are very important because it makes you, it changes your, your attitude, it changes your mindset, it makes you understand the promises, the rights that we have with him. Because this word is so clear. David was e explaining how God knew before he was born. Before even he was in his mother's womb, he shows how God knew and designed and knew every detail. And it's so deep that we need to know that he, and he reached a point of saying, how do I hide from you? Even what looks like darkness, to you it is light. When I hide anywhere, light, you know, in every situation, once you are with him, it turns out to be good. Praise God. So he's around us. He's around us and we, no, we don't need to fear anything. Praise God. Um, I, I like to read scriptures. Don't mind. It speaks better than me. 
let's again read uh, 2 Corinthians 6. And that's why I request that when we continue from here, we go deep into these words. They will make us totally different. Because the word is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It will dig into our souls and make us different. And that's how we are going to defeat the enemy. That's how we are going to be victorious in our journey. Because you know who you are. You know your promises. You know what you're entitled to. There is nothing that can stand before you. You'll be a strong person who is the right ambassador for Christ. And who shall be the light and the salt as the word commands us. Second Corinthians 6. Those are some of the conditions that God again gives us if we are to manage this journey. Second, Read. Second Corinthians 6 from verse 14 to 16. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. I think it's very clear. Still there is that condition. We must be separated for him. When you read 17 that he did not read, it's fine, I can read it. It says that, therefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Praise God. Meaning, even if he loves us so much, still, that condition, we don't forget it. Let us not yoke with those who are not for us. He says, because he's pure, we have to be pure. That's a condition that he cannot compromise on it. Yes, he has given us all the rights, but we have to have his identity, which is pure and purity and holiness. We must endeavor and try and fight to see that we remain in that uh, righteousness and holiness so that we can be able to continue to be his own children. Praise God. Romans 8. Romans 8 from verse 13. It's just an emphasis of who we are. Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Continue. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Praise God. Praise God. Now this scripture is almost repeating what we've been talking about. Being pure, walking his light, in his light, and also being heirs of his kingdom. But he brings in another portion, that if indeed Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. It brings the, 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 the portion of suffering. How do we suffer? First of all, if you are to make your walk or your stand in these systems of this world, there is that suffering. You'll be attacked, you'll be fighting, you'll not be understood, you may be rejected. There are so many things that can happen to you. So, but in that suffering, we need to bear in mind that indeed we are not of this world. The world has not known it. We read it in John. The world has not known us. It has not known him. So they cannot know us. So it shouldn't be something that should put us down. No. That's a sign that indeed 
we are not of this world and there's greatness within us because we are not of this world. We are just the, the heirs of the kingdom. And one day we shall be glorified with him. Praise God. So this, if you see that you are not being received and being accommodated in the world system, know that indeed you are not of this world. Let's take it positively. We need to have our thoughts right to make the, our thoughts be positive in this walk. The negative should turn into positive. Praise God. As he turned everything positive for us, let us not forget that he is making all things turn to our best. The negative part will be taking you to another positive part. Praise God. But it shouldn't be scaring you. By the way, when you see uh, the negative things around you, know that there is that greatness within you. It is a sign. The devil cannot fight someone who is weak. Are we together? Not at all. That one we should even be praising God. When you see things happening to you, know that indeed there is God in me. And that should make you strong and encourage you to be strong. Praise God. If you clap, clap for God. It is a fact. Praise God. We are about to conclude. I want us to read uh, Isaiah 41 from verse 10. You can stop at 16. Isaiah 41 from verse 10 to 16. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who were incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. You shall seek them and not find them, those who contended with you. Those who war against you shall be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, you worm, Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord, and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them. The wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for the Lord. That's not, I, I don't think that's how we clap for him. Maybe you didn't understand this word. Amen, amen. Praise God. I love this scripture, as all the scriptures, but this is so good. First of all, you can imagine he says that fear not. Hmm? I'm going to help you. You warm Jacob. Sometimes we think that we are so weak to the situations around us. But again, there's that assurance. He cannot leave us. I want to know if you're a parent here, if your child is going through some hard time, tell me one parent who may not, not care at all. Anyone really, any proper-minded parent, if your child is going through some hard time, would you settle? Would you not do what you can do in your means, in your effort, in your strength on all the connections you have, you will try to help that child, I believe. Is that true? And here he's again emphasizing that I will not leave you. I will help you. I will be with you. He reached a point of saying that even those who are fighting you, you look for them and you don't find them. Hmm? He says, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hmm? That is like sort of swearing to you that I'm righteous and my right hand will hold you. You can imagine. 
He says that, Behold, even those who are against you, they shall be ashamed. Who will fight them? He's the one to fight them. And he says that they will be disgraced and they shall be as nothing. Meaning that in the suffering of our journey, let us not be scared. He's there. He's fighting for us. He's a faithful father. He's so good. Praise God. And then he says that those who strive with you, they will perish. And, those who, and you will seek them, not find them. And those who contend with you, and those who war against you, they will be like nothing. As non-existent thing. Praise God. What type of promise, really? It's powerful. And again he says that, For I, the Lord, you are God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not. Praise God. How many situations have you gone through and you feel that within you? Things that would have overwhelmed you and swallowed you up. But you feel like something telling you, no, you can make it. You can make it. It can change. And God does it. He says, fear not, I will help you. He reaches a point of assuring you that indeed you are like a worm. Hmm? That fear not, you worm, Jacob. Just a worm. Imagine a worm. You, anyone can step on this worm without even recognizing it. You walk on it. But he says, even if you are that worm, I will help you, says the Lord. And re you are redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, now, this is the best that I love. Behold, you know, after going through all that, there's something else that is building within you. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. Can you imagine that? I get excited about this. I think we need to know that we are warriors. We have to fight. Hmm? Now he's telling you that you are going to turn, even if you were warm yesterday or even today, but I'm making you that new slashing sledge with sharp teeth, and you shall thresh the mountains, not even just hills, mountains. Are we together? I think you don't believe it. Do we believe it really? Do you know that there's no one who is weak in the kingdom of God? No one is weak. Everyone is a battle axe, let me tell you. He says that you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. I think another version is even beautiful, but don't mind. We don't have time. You know, he's going to make you just destroy these mountains. Mountains, and they become like chaff. Praise God. And you shall winnow them. Hmm? Amen. You shall winnow them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind will sh shall scatter them, and you will rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And glory in the Holy One of Israel. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God that he's so faithful. At the end of it all, he doesn't have weak children. No. He had, cannot build and make us just those weak heirs of his kingdom. No. We are so strong. We shall make these mountains melt before us and scatter them. And the wind will blow them. Praise God. So the world is waiting for us. Those who are in bondages, those who are in prisons, those who are in addictions, those... They're waiting for us. Where are we? For me, that's the question I really ask us as the elder time. We are, all, we are this strong, and he's ready for, to be with us. He's saying, I'm there. I'll make you strong. Praise God. We need to rise up and know that we're in this season where we must, we must take our position. Here, our senior pastor was telling us about the repositioning. It is a new season. We must take it up and be that. Praise God. The scriptures are so clear. The presence of God is so clear to us. Why are we not moving in that victory? Praise God. He's ready to help us. And he's going to fulfill that. What he's looking for is just our willingness. He can't force us. We are gods. You know, you cannot be forced to be a god. You must say, yes, I'm, I'm moving or I'm not. He allowed us to be that. Praise God. Praise God. He's so good. We have his assurance. 
We have his security. We have his intimacy. We have, you know, all the discipline that we want us to have. He's there to help us. Even when you fall, you will rise up again. Who tells you that you cannot rise up? So he's there to help us all the time. Praise God. There is no excuse. It's only us to take what belongs to us and be those very sons and daughters of the kingdom of the king of kings. And we walk as princesses and prince of this world and take charge and rule the, this earth. Creation is waiting for us, for the sons of man. Where are we? Praise God. I believe it's high time we know who we are and move into that that we are supposed to be. Praise God. As we end, I request that we all think about who we are and look into your world. Why are we not being what we are supposed to be? Last Sunday we talked about and those who know they are God, they will do exploits. He's still emphasizing to remind us that we are his children. We are no longer slaves. The, the, our Lord told the disciples that you are no longer slaves. You are my friend. I have revealed everything that the Father revealed to me. So you know every detail. What are we lacking? What? I want someone to tell me. Why are we not moving in that victory? Whose fault? I don't think we can point a finger. We need to check ourselves so that we, we do not become enemies of ourselves. Praise God. Let's move in that victory. But remember one thing. The kingdom of God is for those who are like children. That is the last part I want us to remember as we conclude, as we go before him, as he has given us this that he expects us to be. Even when we are make, making mountains melt, we remain children. In Matthew, he says that, let little children come to me. Do not resist, resist them. Do not reject them. He wants us to be little children. How? By depending on him. In our strength, we must remain that weak. Not weak like in weak form, but dependent of him. Praise God. Remain little children where you do not take any action without him. And that's how we are going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's where our strength is. That we shall walk and be those very strong vessels, the very vessels that are going to be the light and the answer to the world. Praise God. Praise God. We are going to stand up. I request we stand up and choir. Let's also sing that same chorus as we present ourselves before him, renew ourselves. I know we are reading scriptures that we, we all know. They may, we may be used to these words, but let me tell you, every time God as he reminds us, he wants us to take this word as fresh as it is. To be the real children, praise God. The very vessels that are going to be pleasing before him. So he is reminding us so that we can be equipped and be disciplined and be assured of his presence with us. To be sons and daughters that are holding the answers of this world. Praise God. So we are going to sing this chorus as we present ourselves before him once again in a, a declaration in our own words to say, here I am, Lord. Undress me from the slavery mentality. Remove the clothing of, of slavery. Remove the mindset that is not allowing me to be that very child who is the heir of the kingdom, the royal priesthood. Praise God. So we are going to sing this chorus, uh, this song, as we pray and present ourselves before him. Praise God. Take it as an individual decision. Okay, quiet, please. If you can begin to speak to the Lord in your spirit as we worship. He's in this place. You unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone 
please give yourself to God in your own words. We are no longer slaves. We give ourselves to you, Lord, as your own children. Today, Lord, take us as your own. Make us, Lord. We give ourselves to you that we are no longer slaves, but we are children. And Lord, we believe and agree with what you are doing, that indeed we shall walk as the real children on this earth. We stand in that faith with you, Lord, that we shall be the real children that are pleasing before you, the heirs and joint heirs of the kingdom, that we shall take charge and take control and take dominion over everything that is happening on this earth. You give us the keys of the kingdom of heaven and you give us the authority because you, it belongs to you. Here we are, Lord. Here we are as individuals, as people, as a ministry. Lord, we give ourselves to you as a nation that we shall walk with you and be the real children, the sons and daughters that will make a difference. We walk with you, Lord. We give ourselves to you. We totally surrender to you that you have your way. Have your way, Lord. From this moment, Lord, take us deep, that we shall not miss you at any time. Make us walk in that fullness of who we are, of what you want us to be. We want to say thank you because we know that you are faithful to your word to fulfill it. You started good work within us, Lord. You will accomplish it. We take your word as true and true indeed. Lord, we pray that you help us to walk in it, in that greatness, that you will make us those very vessels that will be the new threshing sledge, that will be able to make mountains melt before us and hills to melt before us. And your weed will blow on them, they will become like chaff and completely scatter. Lord, we pray that let our enemies scatter before us and let us walk in that victory. The glory will be back to you. Let us be glorified on this earth as you are glorified, Lord, that the people will know that indeed we belong to you. Glorify yourself, King of glory. Glorify yourself through us, O oh Lord, that you shall walk in that faith, that everyone will know that there is that uniqueness within us, that we do not belong to this world, but the world of, of, the, of your kingdom, where we will walk as ambassadors and the light and the salt of this world, where many will come for that beauty, for that sweetness, that they will have answers and find us ready to stand for the kingdom. We want to bless you, Lord. We thank you because you are faithful. Heavenly Father, we are going even to give with our substance in our hands as a sign that indeed we love you, we honor you, we are part of who you are. Our resources are for you. We give ourselves to you. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I totally believe God has done what he, was he had planned to do this morning. Kindly clap for God. <laughs> clap for the servant of God. Clap for the choir, for the ministry. Now listen, when you came this morning together with me, we were burdened, we had issues, we had many questions, so many things not yet solved. But after crossing from impossibilities to possibilities and reading the word of God which has assured us and restored our faiths, we are going back as weapons of mass destruction. We are not weak anymore. The world is looking at us. We are taking solutions home. Those who need help in the world, we are the ones provided. We have forgotten all about our, our issues because already God has assured us. He has told the teaching today was to know who we are in Christ. So we would like to thank you for the way God has used you to bring about the word of God. And I am very sure 
it has been understood.